Welcome back to another video guys. We are here in the shop today. Um, it's actually Boxing Day today, so Merry Christmas to all you guys. Hope everyone had a good Christmas. Um, you know, we're gearing up for the new year, but have a few days in between. So I thought I'd get some work done today while the shop's kind of quiet, nobody around. So one of the chores we're gonna be working on today is getting the, getting the breather lights installed. Uh, I got nice stainless bars there with some watermelons on them uh, for that. And, uh, oh, maybe I'll show them to you. So here they are. Also, we've got some other fancy bling here. These are made up by uh, Corwin at Specked Out Customs. So they're really nice and they are meant to hang on the mirror. This is kind of his design, I think. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna bolt those on. I think they're gonna look quite snazzy. And we already have a wire provisioned. So we can wire these bad boys up and see what they look like. But before we get into those two projects, why don't I uh, skip back and show you the process of mounting these lights up real quick. Okay, now that that's done, um, first thing you need to do in installing these watermelon lights is you need to take these two bolts loose. So I've already got this side loose. You just, uh, these are a socket head or an Allen head on these, they've been replaced. So you just, you know, loosen those back. Uh, this top one is in a rib nut. This bottom one, for whatever reason, when it got painted, they just put a nut on the backside. So I'll show you what I had to do to get to it. It'll be fine, I don't really plan on changing this ever again, but I just took the two bolts out for the fuse panel, and it's hard to see. I don't really have any light with me today. But anyways, back in there, you can get to the nut on the back side of this. So that was no big deal. Got them both loose. Next step is we're actually gonna take these and flip them over and add our harness to it and add a little bit extra length so we can hang out the bottom and then we'll wire them after. But just to get them mounted, the harness needs to be in there. There's not a lot of clearance to do anything after the fact. So let's flip these over and we'll get the harnesses put on. So nothing crazy. We're just gonna use these plugs again and we only need the two wires. Um, for these ones, we're also gonna go to the bright lights. So we remember that's red on the other ones. White was ground and then black was your running light. Uh, we're not going to use those because we're not going to make them flash. So we'll uh, we'll cut four off of this harness and we'll plug them in. So that's four. And we'll terminate these two wires because it's a pigtail. So we'll terminate these nice back to itself. Plug these four in and then let this hang down the bottom so we can wire to it later. Um, yeah, so let's do that quick. So there, those are done. Now I'm gonna take some of this uh, shielded two wire wire, strip a little back. I'm gonna add it onto here and I'm gonna install this. I'm not gonna cut it off yet. Um, not quite sure what I wanna do. Probably run it down, run it in this hole here into the dash. And uh, we'll leave some excess inside so we can wire it to our switches and do all that fun stuff. And then we'll bring the other one over and around and in. And then I'm also gonna run another one out and down and it'll be for the skirts when they go on with their lights but that'll be for another day. So I didn't want to bore you with that, but just like we did in the last video, got our wires um, hooked up. Common theme is normally red is power, black is ground. So we're gonna go red to the black, which is our power wire and white is our ground. Um, so the harness is backwards on here, but for everything else, it's gonna be this way. So we're gonna wire it like that so we don't get confused later on. 
black should normally be ground in most applications. So we'll get a little bit of tape on that. We don't really need it, but just to make it look a little nicer. Then we'll get this mounted up on the truck here. And then we can gauge how much wire we think we need and we'll cut it off and feed it through into the cab. So we'll just set this on the ground here. And then we're just gonna take this and feed it in. Sorry, I might block the camera here. Do the best I can. But it's a little tricky. So there's two settings. There's this setting and then there's a lower setting. I think we're going to run the lower setting. I don't like the way it crowds the breather lip cap, cap, the lip of the cap here. So we'll pull this back out, run it down to the shorter setting. Washers that kind of get in the way. We'll make sure they're sticking out for us. Oh. Washers being a little bit finicky on this top one. Let's see if we can. One sec. Just need to run the washer out. And there, that's installed. I think that looks pretty good. We'll just uh, tighten up those two bolts in the back and we'll uh, figure out how much wire we need. So let's figure out how much access we need now. Uh, we're gonna come around the bottom, up through the hole, so at least that much, and then let's add, oh shit, we'll be a bit generous. That should be good. We have about that much, so next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna feed this down and around. Like so, we'll add a few clamps and stuff to keep it in place later on. Try to get some of the squiggle out of this line. We'll actually come around, come up behind all of this stuff here. And we're gonna feed it right into the firewall right there. That looks as good a spot as any. We're gonna feed all of it in. And then come around, here's what we fed through. And we'll actually end up feeding that up under the dash. We'll take these panels down again and we'll feed it across. And we're gonna tie into one of these switches here. I'm not sure which one yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have one separate for just the breather lights or if we're going to do the breather lights and the skirt lights or the breather lights and the mirror lights but you know now we got lots of options the wires here and that's just step one get these loosened off And there you have it. That's one side. That's two sides. The camera died halfway through filming this, so that's why uh, I didn't film. So I was having trouble with my phone yesterday. The memory was full. Um, so I wasn't able to record everything, but I did get quite a bit done, so let me show you. Got the lights here mounted. You saw that, I think. 
Got these mounted, um, just about have them wired. Figured out I have a ground problem. I have ground at this nut, but where I grounded this one was here. I don't have ground there. And it probably has something to do with all of the powder coating and stuff like that I have on these mirrors. And I don't really want to scuff these up too bad. So I think what I'll do is I'll just run a little jumper wire that'll follow this cable anyways, and we'll just have it, uh, you know, we'll put a, an eyelet on each end, put an eyelet here, run it down along the mirror bracket with this wire, and then we'll just uh, put an eyelet on that end, bolt it up, we'll have a good ground. No problem there. And then on the other side, same thing. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. The next thing I gotta do is tape this wire, like you might have saw on the other side, to here. This is for the heated mirror. And we gotta actually pull the handle off or the armrest off inside the door. We'll pull these wires through and I'll wire them in the dash so the heated mirrors work. Uh, one of the reasons why I haven't done that yet is because I wasn't sure if I was going to like this mirror setup with the convex built into the mirror. I wasn't sure if there's going to be enough sight, uh, you know, line of sight in the top mirror. But, you know, driving it home, I think it's going to be fine. So we'll go through the trouble of wiring that and making it look nice and pretty. And maybe I'll kick these lights on for you so you can see how bright they are. They look really good. So I do have the dash pulled apart. Um, I'm gonna change all the lights in these gauges. I didn't do it while I was putting them in because I didn't have power to the truck and with the LED bulbs, they, they only work one way so I wasn't able to properly test them but now everything's working so I'll be able to do that. And what do we got, this one here I think? Yeah, yeah you can see them turn on. Yeah, so those, those there's those lights all lit up. Be cool when that one's lit up too. And the plan and the reason why I have to add that ground wire is the original plan for these lollipop lights was to just run them as a marker light and not as a turn signal. But I got thinking, you know, if they're going to be hanging out there, they might as well work as a turn signal. So that's why the two wires I ran, I should have run three in this wire that I ran through the mirror bracket. I should have run a three wire um, <clears throat> shielded cable through, but I didn't. So I hooked them up to the two power functions on the light and then the ground I just ran, move this stuff nice and clean and ground it there. But as I said, that isn't working and rather than grinding this down and this down to make it work, I'm not doing that. So yeah. That's what we got so far. Probably gonna do some more wiring today. I'm uh, getting some hardware so we can start putting these rear axles back together. That'll probably be the next video. But one of the other things is get this rear center light uh, panel wired up. So the other day we were messing around. I found the plug and cut it off the old one. Let's see if I can find that now. Yeah, here it is here. So we'll clean this up a bit. It's just got some paint on it that's flaking off. But I got it marked out which wires do what. And we'll wire that up. Get that rear center light panel working. And then the last real thing to wire is the side skirts. When they go on, they're sitting on the floor over there. And then the headlights for the hood. But they're all plug and play. I'm not really changing anything and the bumper lights so we're getting we're getting her done oh the one thing i did when the camera was dead is you know i looped this around and brought it into the cab well i also teed into it and added this lead so i can run it back and run the skirts so that provision's ready this is just hanging here i will tuck that up tidier out of the way later and then I did the same on this side, and rather than running this in the cab, I actually ran it up the firewall across with this wiring loom. I gotta cut these zip ties off and over to the other side. So it's nice and clean with all that other stuff and easy to get to. And I only have one wire going into the dash. So if I ever have issues, I can kind of uh, 
you know, work, work it backwards. You know, the light isn't working here. Okay. So test for power at this connection, then test for power at that connection and then test for power in the cab. And you know, it should make it easier rather than, Oh, I got one power feed coming here. One there, at least all that stuff will work together. So that's the way I like to do it. There's a million different ways. Different strokes for different folks. Everyone has their way of doing it, but um, for all the, not all the chicken lights, but for a lot of the clearance lights, I like to run them off of one power feed. They're LED, they don't draw much. So that way they're easy to figure out what's wrong. And the other part of that is that's kind of how the other black truck is wired and same with how the switches are. So if you're jumping in and out of trucks, you, oh, you know, this truck, you got to flip these three switches, that truck, this switch, that switch, and then one over there, at least this way, they'll all be the same and uh, won't be confusing. So let's get back to work. So we're in the truck. We're getting these lollipop lights wired up. I got my jumper on that side. It's working fine on this side. Give me one sec. Let me get you a light here. Okay, so we're back here. Got some light. Looks like the painters left me a little present. I don't know how I didn't catch that when we were taking the truck apart. Sometimes stuff falls down in there. and I don't know how it would end up here. But anyways, we'll uh, get that out of the way. But these trucks come wired with uh, provision for turn signals on the mirrors. So here's the wires here if you're looking for them in your cab. And they actually say turn on them so what that will allow us to do grab a test light here we'll just hook it to a ground there's a ground there kick the turn signal on for the right side and That's our right turn signal. And like I showed you, I ran the wires through the mirrors earlier. So here's the wire I have wired. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I want the, the bright light to be the running light. That's backwards and normal, but that's how I wired the um, breather light. So I'm gonna wire it so the bright light is the running light. And then when you kick the flasher on, you know, to flash to the to the low beam. It, it's flashing just the same, shouldn't make any difference. Um, so we'll do it that way. If I don't like it, I can always switch it. We're going to wire it so that the black wire is our low wire. It's gonna go to this plug here, the red one. We're gonna run up and tee it in with the uh, running light from the other side, and then we'll actually tee it back in here in the dash where I've left this plug out. And that means when I turn the clearance lights on, it's actually the auxiliary clearance lights. So the clearance lights will be the roof lights and the running lights on the headlights and the tail lights. And then when I flip the next switch, it'll be the skirts, the breather lights, the lollipops and the bumper lights will all come on separately. I think that'll look cool. And that's kind of how the other trucks wired. So we'll get this wired up quick. We'll see what it looks like. The One of the issues we have with LED lights in these older trucks, they don't draw. One, one of the issues we do have with LED lights in these big trucks is that they don't have enough resistance on the wire to make the relays work properly. So um, there's some special digital relays you can put in, or sometimes if you get enough LEDs working, they'll work. Um, so for now, I do have a digital relay in there, but there's still just for one marker light on the side that I was trying to work. It's not flashing yet. If you touch the test light to it, it flashes fine because the test light has an incandescent bulb and uh, makes it work the way it likes to. Sorry about my hand there. has an incandescent bulb and makes it work the way it like to. So we're going to wire this all up and then uh, show you what it looks like. So I've been doing a bit of work off camera here, but that was pretty easy to wire up. We had that, this was already wired, the panel from the last truck it was on. We just had to adapt it to fit. Uh, I cut the plug, like I said, off that one. So I just wired it there. No problem, I'm gonna add some loom, clean that up a bit. So that part's good. That's all working the way it should. Those rear lights are on, they look awesome. 
running lights are working, front lights are working. And then while I was doing that, my dad got these hubs or axles painted up where they were welded. So that's cool. Um, we're just waiting on some bolts so we can bolt. We're getting new bolts to bolt that back together. Uh, it's what, the 27th today? Everywhere's still closed. So we'll do that as soon as we can. Get those spiders mounted on. And uh, we'll be ready to put the hubs on. And then uh, the other day, went on a little covert mission and got some new tires. Those are brand new. They're like a Michelin. They're a Chinese tire, but we've been running them on the other trucks. They work really good and they last a long time and it's a nice pattern. They're actually uh, winter rated too. So The other tires were like new on this truck, but they just, I had one that was bad. I couldn't find a replacement and they threw rocks so bad. These aren't too bad, so. So with that, that's the end of the video. That's all I have for you guys for this time. We're gonna get working on some other stuff here in the next few days. Got the hood project coming up, this spider project, and getting the wheels put back on, so there's another video there. So, as always, thanks for watching. If you aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. If it's your first time watching, go back and check out some of our other videos. We've got lots of farming videos and a whole build series on this truck if you like Peterbilt's. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.